So, uh, we're between um, this presentation and lunch, so I'm going to make this really fast. And actually, I can make it super fast. There's uh, really only three things you have to remember. Um, the most obvious, probably, conclusion of uh, this breakout session. Uh, one is, Adam already mentioned, uh, social, ca social casino is slots. Number two, again, not surprisingly, that means you need really great slot games. And number three, which I don't think is controversial, um, great slot games come from casino floors. Adam mentioned that 75% of um, social casino is from the US, and not surprisingly, um, the second uh, country, largest country is Australia, and those players, guess what? They go to casino floors a lot, as Adam said, and uh, as a result, they're used to great games. The games that they play on the casino floors are the ones that they like to play on social casino. Okay, we can all go, about, you know, go to lunch now. Oh, well, I guess I should complete this here. Um, so bottom line on um, the overview of the industry is actually what Adam and I didn't even compare notes, but I guess this is true. I did attribute it to you guys, by the way. Um, which is the revenue anticipated uh, to exceed $4 billion in 2018, uh, almost $4 billion in 2000. Uh, 17, uh, or excuse me, 16, this is for 17. Uh, it's kind of a layup to go over $4 billion. Um, slots component uh, estimated to be 80%. Actually, Adam had 79%, so I was off by 1%, but close enough. Uh, and uh, if you look at the top 10 apps, he had the top 10 apps. Eight of them are slots oriented. A couple of them, like ours, uh, Double Down Casino, was said to be uh, a casino app, but essentially slots. Um, there's one bingo, one poker. And you know, it's all about 80% of everything in social casino being slots. Um, so what are these slot games? I mean, we all know what they are. In fact, when I started in this industry uh, six years ago, I was scratching my head thinking, how much innovation, how much creativity, how much, uh, Gene's going to smile, um, how hard is it to build great slot games, right? Um, and the reality is, um, it's kind of like building great movies or great anything in entertainment. The components all seem about the same, but it's really hard. Uh, and uh, what's uh, magical about a great slot game is the component that nobody can put in an algorithm or in a bottle. Uh, it's um, about what the player ultimately decides is, is magical or is important. So, uh, you know, right out of uh, Wikipedia, um, you know, casino, casino games, uh, that our slot games have three or more reels. You spin a, uh, the, the reels when you push a button, or from, for those of us that are of a certain age, pull a handle. Uh, and the machines pay off according to certain symbols uh, and how those symbols in, um, in, in, in certain orders land. And that's it. And oh, by the way, players love them. And again, we're going to talk about it in a minute. They don't love all of them. In fact, they don't love many of them. In fact, they don't love most of them. They love a few, uh, but they love them. Whether they're called slots or pokies or any other term, uh, lovingly maybe even one-armed bandits, um, these games uh, and the best of these games, players just love, you know? Uh, and uh, that's kind of the key to not only my app or um, a lot of Playtika's apps, but it's key as we just talked about to the industry. So uh, we, from time to time, ask our players questions. Try to figure out what, in fact, is the most important uh, aspect or attribute to, um, to Double Down Casino. And this is not the, the only result we've, we've seen, but it's a consistent result, where the top three experiences, the top three factors that uh, are important to players are the ones that they, they see on the casino floor they experience on the casino floor. And I'll, I'll focus for the rest of the few minutes I have here on, on the third one here, which is authentic casino experience, which speaks directly to this idea of a great slot. You know, whether it's a furry animal that almost got extinct in the 1800s, uh, that's a buffalo, by the way, uh, or whether it's some, you know, and I'll say this for Gene, some golden um, princess, uh, or as we'll talk about in a minute, an Egyptian queen, um, those games are, are just, some, there's something about them that, that are important, uh, and um, they're, they're, they're so important for players, so they're really important to us. Uh, and the reality is that social experiences and the wrapper 
around these games is important. I think one of our competitors is going to talk about social factors and so, so the, the social aspects of these apps. And don't get me wrong, those are really important too. But if you could only pick one thing that's important, if you could only do one thing that's uh, industry leading, it would be get your hands on some of these most compelling games. 3,568, that's a non-scientific calculation by myself on how many slot games uh, were developed in the last 12 months by everybody who's working on slot games. Uh, and um, that's a lot of games. Guess what? Not surprisingly, most of them don't matter. There's only a few that matter. Now, there's a volume aspect to this business, just like there's a volume aspect to the casino business uh, from a slots perspective. So, you know, we come out with a game every two weeks. Um, many of our competitors do the same thing. Uh, but the reality is, you know, the fuzzy animal, the, uh, the, you know, the golden princess, the Egyptian queen, all those games um, make up for 10, 100 times the games that are being developed all the time. So, so you know, the key is to figure out which of these games are the best games and then, you know, leverage the heck out of them. So for us, for Double Down Casino, it's, it's these games. Uh, and uh, many, many players know these. These are all on the casino floors. Uh, and we've, we've had them based on our relationship with IGT from the 2012, the first acquisition. Uh, we have had uh, the pleasure of launching these games, marketing, promoting them, um, and they just keep delivering. Uh, and uh, that's important, right? Uh, we have a volume aspect, and we have to launch new games, and we all always look for more games out of IGT. Um, we have people down the street here in Seattle that, uh, I won't say anything bad about those people in Seattle uh, in my team who are trying to build great Slack games, and I want them to continue to try, but the reality is, the most important aspect of, um, of our business is to find the ones on the left that are great um, uh, in Vegas or you know, up at Tulalip or wherever and, and to leverage those and launch those. Um, Clio is, is, a, is a great example. Uh, and there's, there's ways you can leverage these games as well. You can riff on you know, Clio, you can add jackpots, you can do all kinds of interesting things, but be careful. Because riffing on a game doesn't mean it's going to keep its true identity and, and as a result be true to the player. Uh, and, um, you know, we've always talked about clones and why can't you just clone a great math model forever. And, and the reality is uh, a, cl a clone generally doesn't work. And so, you, you know, you can't miss, uh, you know, you can't mess with the formula. Uh, but, you know, there's certainly a lot of desire to do so once you find something that works really well. So for us, um, the relationship with IGT is extremely important. Um, as uh, Adam had mentioned, we recently uh, got sold by IGT to W Games, which uh, you know, was fairly headline making. It wasn't $4 billion, but it was nearly a billion dollars. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a lot of money. Uh, but I think what's lost in the, uh, in the news was the second deal that got struck between W Games and IGT which is a partnering relationship to allow Double Down Interactive to continue to get games uh, from IGT. And so we have the ability to continue to get great games and uh, we continue to, to frankly, uh, whether it be from IGT brands or from the licensed brands uh, from, uh, from the IGT portfolio, we continue to get uh, essentially to pick uh, you know, to get the cream of the crop, to get the pick of the litter. We continue to be able to get information from IGT that suggests, um, you know, what games are doing well on the casino floor, and then we get to, you know, put those in Double Down Casino. And um, we're really excited this week uh, because for the very first time, we now have an app in our business other than Double Down Casino. So uh, last week, just actually end of last week, we launched our first separate app, a Double Down Classic, which uh, leverages the IGT portfolio uh, specifically on the mechanical reel or stepper side. So I suggest you all immediately go search for Double Down Classic uh, and um, you'll, you'll see great games, iconic uh, IGT games that uh, are in the uh, stepper mechanical reel category. That's just another kind of aspect or dimension to this relationship we have with, uh, with IGT. 
yeah, what makes a great game? I don't know. Uh, they, uh, we, we, we do know that we need a portfolio of great games. Uh, and so there's the spectrum that we continue to talk about, the entertainment player, the time on device player, and the you know, very, very you know, high-end player, whale, um, high roller player, and then the gambler that's somewhere in the middle. Um, and frankly, to have a successful social casino app, you need games across this spectrum and across this portfolio. And thankfully, with our IGT relationship, we have games that fall into you know, to all these uh, points along that, you know, along this spectrum, whether it be kind of an easier ride game, kind of a video slot game, or um, a common device game, or a very um, harsh but very rewarding uh, game that uh, perhaps is a, a simpler game or even a kind of a mechanical wheel or stepper game. So uh, in the last few minutes here, let's just do a case study. Um, and this is, again, the most obvious presentation you'll see all, all week. Case study is Wheel of Fortune, the granddaddy of them all. And uh, of course, uh, as, as many of you know, Wheel of Fortune is not a slot machine. It's not a slot game. It's a whole category of slot machines and games. Over the years, IGT, 20 plus years, IGT has launched well over 200 uh, Wheel of Fortune games. And um, not surprisingly, Double Down Casino has launched a lot of them. Uh, and uh, we have the opportunity to, again, look at the pick of the, you know, do the pick of the litter, look to see what games, what Wheel of Fortune games as a subcategory are compelling games on the casino floor. Uh, there's a whole set of these games that actually go across that spectrum I just showed from time on device entertainment games to rewarding um, high, highly volatile games. And we generally kind of look as we uh, look at our portfolio for the coming year at doing a mix of these games. And uh, we, um, uh, have been uh, pretty, um, pretty successful in, in, in the launch of these games. We generally launch a game, a, a Wheel of Fortune game every few months. Uh, obviously, you can't go back to the well too much. It's very interesting that one of our competitors who we also share the license to um, with the Wheel of Fortune brand has an app completely dedicated to Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I don't know how well that's doing, but uh, you, know, you can argue a little bit uh, of this is great. Maybe a, a lot is not a great thing. Uh, but just like on the casino floor, it's, it's a marquee uh, game uh, within the larger set of uh, slot uh, games that we have in our, in our casino. And uh, without numbers here, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, so people always ask, uh, what makes Wheel of Fortune great? I'm sure they ask Gene that a lot, right? And you know, the, the perfunctory answer is it's the wheel, stupid. Uh, and so we uh, de definitely find very interesting ways to represent the wheel, um, which is really a good topic just uh, kind of for a minute to discuss. Uh, as we talk about authentic games and talk about taking a game from, you saw that Cleo cab Cleopatra cabinet and, and putting it into my iPhone, that's, that's not easy, and especially getting it right when it comes to making the authentic experience go from, a, as my VP of engineering says, from a large refrigerator to your iPhone. Uh, that's, that's not easy. Uh, and it's also not cheap. So uh, I think one of the things to think about when you think about potentially partnering with somebody or getting access in some way to authentic slots is that um, it's certainly not the cheapest route. Not only does it take more time and effort to do the port of the game or to do the transition of the game, you're also gonna have to pay somebody, uh, if, if you're not developing authentic games yourself, you're gonna have to pay somebody on an ongoing basis for the, for the rights to those games. Uh, and uh, so it's a little bit not for the faint of heart, but uh, like I said, if you could only do one thing, get your hands on these games. And this is why. So for us, um, if you look at the uh, average uh, of all success or the average result or performance of all of our games, um, every one of these games except one of the Wheel of Fortune games except one has outperformed our average. So we're 10 for 11. And uh, I don't expect this ratio to change over time. We still have a big uh, uh, chunk of the Wheel of Fortune portfolio left and look, look forward to continue to, you know, to launch these games. So I'm um, just about out of time. 
uh, again, the most obvious presentation uh, of this uh, session here. Uh, capturing the casino experience is key. Uh, quantity is important, but quality is more important. Uh, and um, experienced slot game developers are open to partnering. And I think that's something that Adam had on his slide, uh, or set of slides. Um, there are people here who are interested in that. Uh, don't mess with IGT, they're, they're mine. Um, and uh, I have it in writing that they're mine. But uh, I think it's, it's really important um, for, for players to get, get access to these games. And uh, uh, they definitely perform. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Joe. Uh, do we have uh, any questions right now? Great presentation. Uh, you mentioned that you like to kind of dive into IGT's portfolio of past successes, but do you also look towards some of the newer product coming out, or do you wait to see how it performs on the casino floor? Yeah, I mean, I think the good news is that IGT is part of that 3,200 games a year, um, and so they're always developing uh, new games and looking for, for new hits. We certainly uh, have... Uh, some results for games that have been um, recent uh, high performers uh, uh, for IGT that have been great performers for us. Um, you know, the, the longer the soak time, the more uh, data we get about the longevity of a game on the casino floor, the higher the percentage of success. Uh, but we uh, certainly have some great examples of games that we uh, had early um, information from uh, even from some of the test banks that are out on casino floors uh, that we that, that we said we know we got to get this game ported right now that have have paid off so it's it's a mix and you know at some point you get through you know the greatest hits you know or we're through the greatest hits at some we'll be through the greatest hits at some point so you've got to take a little bit more risk but um, again I think the the great thing is that that we don't have to take the the, 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 all the at-bats, right? Um, and we don't have to experience the strikeouts and the pop-ups and the ground-outs. We can just get, you know, hopefully doubles and triples and home runs based on what we see from, uh, from the casino floor. Hi, one question. Um, how many games are you releasing per week or per month, and what is the best day for you to release a new game? <laughs> uh, I think it's a day that ends in Y. Uh, the, uh, the cadence has generally been for Double Down Casino uh, every other week, but we put some other games in every week. I mean, between once a week and, and every uh, other week. I mean, at some point the games collect, and you have to curate, obviously, the collection of all these games. Um, but, um, but obviously our players, just like all Social Casino uh, slot app players, are looking for th the next thing. Again, this is so much like the casino uh, floor. I mean, there's always the, you know, the, the, the new set of games that get launched, again, in Vegas on, at the Wynn or MGM or Tulalip up, up the street. And there's always, you know, generally a section where the hot new games come out and players get to try their hand and see if that becomes one that they um, put in their, their favorites list. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a cadence in the one to two week period. How much? Adaption, do you, when you, ch when you take an RMG slot machine and you apply it to social, do you have to um, change the math model or do you just use the same RTP and volatility? Yeah, we give 150 RTP to all our games. No, I'm just <laughs> uh, that's a great, that's a great question, all right? The adaptation porting whatever the game is, is the most important, after you pick the, pick the game, it's the second most important thing. And that includes kind of how do you take the, visual representation of the refrigerator game to the iPhone, but it also includes the adaptation of the math. Uh, our experience is that, um, you know, other than tuning it to work for, for obvious reasons like economy differences and that kind of thing, uh, you know, we, we, we don't want to mess with it too much, much because if you, the more you mess with these things, as I said earlier, at some point you could lose the the recipe or the magic or the whatever makes this game uh, great. And so we, uh, we, we try to mess with it as little as, as, as possible. How do you think about the branded content on uh, Social Casino versus kind of the more successful titles that have been on the floor? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, if there's great game A that's not branded and great game A that's 
branded. I mean, I want this one because I have to pay, you have to pay the licensor or something, right? So there's always the tax associated with the licensor. Um, uh, that being said, I think it's, uh, again, for, for us, it's not unlike the casino floor, right? You go up the to, to Laylip, 85, 90% of the floor is, is, is non-licensed. Um, and you've got, you know, 10% of the floor that's, you know, Ellen and, you know, Breaking Bad and Wheel of Fortune. And, you know, that's about the right mix, uh, we think, for a you know, kind of generalized slot casino that's, that's trying to be authentic like us. You mentioned earlier about um, porting machines from the floor to the online. Has IGT or anyone investigated actually building the game online and spending, instead of spending all that money and testing the mechanics online first before pushing it to the casino floor? I find that would be a much more economical way to do things than take a risk and put it out on the floor in a box. Yeah, no, that's the, that was the question that I think IGT got starting from 2012 when, when we bought IGT way back when. Uh, and, um, you know, I think the, for, if, you just be, if you're just myopic and you want to maximize social casino success, what you want to do is start on the casino floor and um, take the pick of the litter. If you have, you know, the whole business in mind, um, which is actually not IGT now, uh, but it's certainly side games, aristocrat, et cetera, then, you know, the idea that I could test games on, uh, with social players is really interesting, but there's some practical limitations of that. For instance, you've got to actually finish the game and launch the game before you get real feedback. Uh, that's what we found. And at the end of the day, it also takes one of our slots in slots, other version of the word slot, uh, of, of, of our launch cadence, right? So in a sense, you have to believe that the benefit to the casino floor will outweigh what may be actually sub-optimizing for your social casino business because you are using your social casino business as a, uh, as a test bed, which is by definition not going to perhaps be optimal, you know, uh, in, in all cases for that business. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Great. Thank you, guys.